around the turn. I know literally nothing about the men's crew. Too. The only thing I know about men's crew is that I can't be in it because I'm not a guy. Um, honestly, shit, I didn't even know we had a fucking crew team. <laughs> <laughs> ah, God, this is so stupid, but literally the first thing I think of is either rowing or a step team. Uh, I see him practicing at the rest bar. I mean, you know, I've heard it call it cults, I've heard it call it fraternity. Or... They're a club sport, um, but they, they act like they're varsity. Rowing, is it? Something yeah. similar to that? Yeah. Crew is actually the world's oldest intercollegiate sport. Um, it, Oxford and Cambridge have been it's a it's rowing it's you're in boats and you have an oar or two oars depending on what kind of rowing you're doing but basically you're moving a boat via oars um, that's like the simplistic definition um, and then basically you race so it's a type of endurance racing my name is Ben Weinman I'm from Quito Ecuador I knew that I was interested in crew so I quickly uh, made contact with people on the team. Um, month in, I was trying out, and then a week later, I was practicing. You're devoting, I would say, between three to four hours a day, five to six days a week. You fall into a very tight schedule. You're waking up early in the morning. Um, it fluctuates from year to year. It range in the morning. Morning practices usually happen between six or six thirty. And they last for an hour, and then you have to take into account that you're working out for three to four hours, and it's not any. It's not sitting on a tre and sitting on a stationary bike pedaling while reading a magazine. You're going all out. I mean, you are putting yourself through a strenuous, strenuous workout. So the crew team is a collection of guys, excluding the coxswains, um, that have this bizarre ability to be different. Like that she thinks that everything she sees on her news feed is like posted on her wall. Um, and live like a very strange collegiate four years. When I think back on what I've done in my four years, as opposed to like what a normal college student has done, it is so different. Basically, you spend so much time with these guys and you are uh, up so early in the morning at such an inconvenient time, but you're with this group of guys and you basically just come, come to having a great time with them and finding ways to get through this grueling sport and, and you end up having a, you know, a race is such a great time because it's just eight of your best friends and you're all yanking on an oar as hard as you can, so it's like, you feel like a Viking. I ended up moving off campus with um, one of the guys who was on the team then, um, Emmett Gillis, um, and then I still live with him today and I also live with Taylor Pardue who's on the team. The people you row with become your best friends. It was a very difficult decision, I mean, these are the people that I spent two and a half years with. Pretty much every day, for a significant part of the day. Um, and I think if it wasn't because I remained close to them, then my experience here would have been very different. My favorite thing about rowing is probably having a family at Carolina where you have a group of girls that you spend every day with and you work and train really hard with so there's just like a, a level of commitment that's like there that like kind of bleeds into your friendship even, you know. My favorite thing about being a varsity athlete was definitely the academic resources that were available. I had tutors for anything I needed them for. And that help makes a huge difference when you don't have time to go and seek out the resources on campus. Um, it's pretty swell, you know. You get pretty much all the cool gear that they sell in stores for free. We get uh, gear for free, Nike gear. We get um, tutors at the AC. Title IX is an interesting thing uh, for sports, especially running and especially men's crew. Title IX is federal law that prohibits discrimination uh, gender discrimination in educational institutions that are federally funded. It's kind of just like, which is the lesser of two evils, I'd say, like, 
you know, is it is it more important to keep you know, women's sports the same number as men's sports, or is it more important to recognize a team that works really hard as a varsity sport? You know, it's like you really can't decide one way or the other without, you know, really offending someone. I know it has to feel really unfair to see teams like football and basketball getting all that recognition, and you feel like you're putting in just as much work and you get nothing. Being a rower, we share the same erg room. Erg is the uh, workout machine that you use if you're a rower, and you, I mean, we see them work really hard. We see them at the boathouse uh, working really hard every day, and it's just, I, I wish that they could have the same experience because they have to pay for everything that they do. Um, we get our hotels paid for, uh, get to go to competitions for free. They have to pay for everything, and I can't even, I can't even imagine. It must be extremely expensive. And they work just as hard, if not harder than any, some athletes on campuses. Don't make it hurt. Do you want a dose of this? I will make the most of this. F is for ferocious. Your associates, the top is so appropriate. This is just where I belong. Keep a heart hard for your girlfriend or why belong. We and we don't want no problems. Okay, okay, you're a goon. What's a goon to a goblin? Yeah, it came on a beat. Go around and leave brains on the street. Ooh, now pop that. Practice hurts. Rowing, rowing hurts. Rowing will get the best of you. It, it is the only sport that I've participated in where, from the beginning to the end, you are in pain. But there's something about that pain that just makes you want to keep going. I mean, it's, it's kind of like, it's hard to satisfy. I mean, that pain becomes such, so rewarding when you hit a number on the erg or when you get a good row in that it's it's that feeling that your your whole body is engaged in the exercise. It's I would say it's as much as it doesn't sound like it, it can be orgasmic. Okay. Well this is um, the culmination of my honors thesis. Uh, I put up a show on my, the work that I've been working on for the last year and I had an opening uh, last week on Tuesday and there's a lot of people here. Um, all my friends with whom I used to row um, came by, which is great. It shows how, what type of a friendship we forged, or we forged while we were together. It, it just wasn't sustainable for me to engage in practice and then try to engage um, in, my, in my art making. So Ben and I met the first day of tryouts when we ran to the boathouse together. Yeah. I think it was the first and only time I beat him on run. Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's been my best friend since coming here, really. Uh, and I think there's a very unique bond that's created when you go through like physical pain together. But yeah, I definitely feel indebted to this sport because it, I, I think that really forged our relationship. And having been through that together, has really established what type of a friendship we have. I know what my ends are. Like, I want to win a national championship. But, like, it's not like the men's basketball team. If they win a national championship, people give a shit.